Today we're taking a look at the Fury from Core Timepieces. This is a watch that does not take itself very seriously. However, this is a GMT powered by an NH34. It gets 300 meters of water resistance and it's made out of titanium. So it has very serious specs, but the design, not so serious, a little bit playful. So let's flip the camera and take a look at Core Timepieces and the Fury GMT. So this is not the first Core Timepieces that I have featured here on my channel. I actually featured one of their watches before, I actually had a switchblade for hands, so that was kind of interesting. This one is also very interesting, however, it's not as out there as other watches that they make. This is called the Fury, so there's a little bit of a fire theme to it. You can see there's a little bit of a fire right there instead of a triangle on the loomed bezel. And then you have a pattern on the dial that's actually sort of embossed into the dial. That is fire as well. And then there's a little saying on the back of the case. So, you know, not too much, but just enough, I would say, if you are interested in something like this. You have the logo also, which is kind of interesting, at the nine o'clock. It counterbalances the date at the three o'clock. This is the green dial. And you also get a bi-colored bezel, so black and green, very similar to the green that is on the dial. You have applied indices. Those are filled with loom. You have black hands here. Those are filled with loom. They are fence post hands. You have a red seconds hand and then a silver GMT hand. So this is a GMT. You're getting a Seiko movement inside is the NH34 which is also very nice. This gets a titanium case and bracelet, bi-directional bezel, which actually sounds and feels really good. And everything lines up really nicely. So that little fire right there lines up really nicely with the index at 12 o'clock. Right at the bottom of the dial, it says Fury. That's the name of this watch. Below that, it says GMT. And then below that, 30 atmospheres, 300 meters of water resistance. So you are getting a screwed in crown and a screwed in case back. So this is a quirky watch that's actually very capable. You have a titanium bracelet and the titanium bracelet is bicolored. So it's titanium in its raw form. And then you have uh, PVD coated links down the middle. You do get push pins in the bracelet and a very generic buckle. Now the buckle I think might be stainless steel because it is a different color from the rest of the bracelet. So that leads me to believe that it is stainless steel. It is signed and it's basically a generic off the shelf micro brand buckle. I would like to see a better buckle on this watch and maybe even a titanium buckle. I think that would make a lot more sense. This has three positions of micro adjust, not a ton. You don't really have half links here. So, uh, you know, it would make sense to have more positions of micro adjust and maybe some half links. You could get a really good fitment that way. Unfortunately, uh, that is the route that they went with this watch. On the back, you do have a screening case back. It says, die of nothing but passion to live. So they have a little saying on the back of their watch. Uh, they did this with uh, the other watch that I reviewed as well. So they put little sayings on their backs, uh, on their case backs, which, you know, you will like if you like this watch, I think. Uh, you have quick release as well on the bracelet and solid end links. It's more of a straight link bracelet on here. It's not really a bracelet that's made specifically for this case. The case itself kind of reminds me of bolder watches a little bit. It's very angular. You have crown guards, kind of a small crown, but you have these crown guards that really protect it. So it actually looks a little bit bigger than it actually is. Let's quickly do dimensions, then we'll talk about price. So dimensions on here, this is at the bezel and that's what it wears like a 41.7 millimeter watch. So it's like a 42 millimeter watch. That's what it wears like because the bezel basically lines up with the case. You do have these crown guards, but it doesn't really affect the fitment of the watch. The lug to lug on here is pretty true to the case. And that is because you do have uh, essentially female end links on here because you have straight links. Uh, so it's 50.6, but at the bracelet, it's 53.9. So really not that bad. It is a thick watch. You do get a dome sapphire crystal. So it's 14.8 millimeters thick. It's not terrible considering it's a 300 meter dive watch or diving GMT, technically not a dive watch per se. 
the crown a little bit on the small side for a 42 millimeter watch 6.7 millimeters not terrible but you know could be a little bit bigger the bracelet does not taper i do want to mention that if you'd like a taper on your bracelet uh, obviously this one does not and i think they're going with a look here that's the reason why they did not taper the bracelet Anyway, very quickly, let's talk about price. This is a $499 watch. You're getting the NH34 and a titanium case and bracelet. It is on the more expensive side, but considering it is titanium, I don't know, it's in the neighborhood of what it should be priced at. Lots of watches coming out with lots of specs and featuring that NH34. Uh, this one is a very quirky version of a GMT, so, you have to like the look of this watch, maybe like the styling of the watch to purchase one. Uh, so that's what it is, $499. Today on my wrist, I have Reuter watches. This is their Peace Unique review coming very soon for this watch. It is phenomenal. The dial is incredible. Value 7750, that is finished to the max. Really, really cool watch. Uh, and excited to show you that. So here it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. It's a 42 millimeter watch, but it definitely wears like a 42 or 43 millimeter watch. Plus that bracelet, which is really thick, the thickness of the case, it makes it wear larger in general. So it feels larger. Uh, it probably wears around what it looks like, uh, like a 43 millimeter watch. So I can't complain about the amount of loom on this dial. There is a lot. So even the date is loomed. You have a loomed logo at the nine o'clock. So everything is loomed. The bezel is completely loomed. Really great. The hands are very brightly loomed. I wish they put a little bit of loom on the second hand so I could see that it's working in the dark. And besides that, it would have been cool if they put some sort of loomed element on that fire on the dial itself. But they did loom that little fire right there at the 12 o'clock on the bezel or the 24 on the bezel, excuse me. So pretty cool overall, very nice loom. It's very bright and very liberally applied. So uh, obviously they went the mile, the full mile with the loom. Okay, now my three questions. Question number one, is it ugly? I think some people will find this watch ugly. Others will really love it. Do I find it ugly? I don't know. It's really not my style. It's not something that I would probably wear. Uh, I don't think it's ugly. I think it kind of flies under the radar. Those little details will fly under the radar. Other than that, I'm not a huge fan of a bracelet that doesn't taper. That's my personal preference. So for me, I'm not sure about if this is ugly. It's not something that is my style. Question number two, is this cool? That is a very hard question as well. If you find this style cool, then you will find this watch cool. Will other people find it cool? It depends on your friends, I don't know. So this is a very hard question to answer. It's definitely not a Hublot, but it's definitely not an MBNF. It's somewhere in the middle, maybe a five. I think that a lot of people will be divided about the styling of this watch, so that's why I give it a five. Last question, is it worth the money? I think it is worth the money. If they charged anything more for this watch, I would say it is not. However, at the $499 price, you are getting a GMT with 300 meters of water resistance, lots of loom, and a titanium case and bracelet. If you like the look of this watch, it's definitely a winner. Anyway, guys, tell me what you think down in the comments below. I think this watch will divide a lot of people. However, I do think it's kind of interesting that they are going down this route. This is a little bit more tame versus previous offerings from the brand. However, it's still a little bit out there. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. I will put a link to their website down in the description. Anyway, guys, thank you for logging on. I will catch you in the next video.